Okay, then we get to the relationship marketing orientation, and this began roughly in the 1990s, and is growing in its popularity. Building lasting relationships. There we go, the two penguins together. Probably uh, mates, husband and wife in the penguin colony. <laughs> so enlightened marketers, marketers that have seen the light, have realized that they need to focus on building long-term relationships with their customers, not just getting a quick sale here and there. Firms build relationships with customers by offering value and providing satisfaction consistently, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, the same consistent value, so that the customer can trust the company. And that results in repeat sales and referrals, customers telling their friends and family. And that's known, obviously, as customer loyalty. And this leads to increased sales, increased market share, and of course, increased profits, which is great for our company. Costs also fall, as I shared earlier, because it's less expensive to serve existing customers than to attract new ones. Keeping a customer, for example, costs 75% less than what it costs to attract a new customer. So it's expensive to just try and get new customers all the time. It's better to just try and keep the ones that you have happy and also still get new customers, but not to focus on your business on just getting new customers only. And the probability of keeping a customer is 60%. The probability of attracting a new one is less than 30. So it's much easier to keep a existing customer than what it is to attract a new one. Customers will also benefit from stable relationships with the firm. Example, if there's a bank teller who knows her clients, she's in a better position to provide a quicker, more efficient, and more personalized service. She can call the people by name, and so forth, than a bank teller who's serving a stranger that they don't know. They still have to build that relationship. They don't know that person yet so well. A sense of well-being occurs also when ongoing uh, when one establishes an ongoing relationship with a local doctor or hairdresser. Right? You have a good relationship with your hairdresser. He or she knows exactly how to cut your hair. That's why you'll often go back to the same person. Because it takes time to find a hairdresser that uh, does your hair the way that you like it. It takes effort. It's much and once you've found a good hairdresser, it's a very it's a it's a weight off your shoulders. You don't have to worry about it. You just go to the same person every time. It saves you time, it saves you money, it saves you stress. Because someone who cuts your hair wrong is a stressful thing. What if they cut their hair wrong and you know people laugh at you and it doesn't look good on you? Okay, there's also a social bonding that takes place, which creates this personalization and customization of the service, which can better meet the customer's needs. And firms can increase these bonds by being reliable, calling customers by their name, and so forth. 